Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Evidence-Based Hair Podcast. I'm dermatologist and hair loss specialist, Dr. Jeff Donovan. I'm also the director of the Evidence-Based Hair Fellowship Training Program. Each week, we review studies that are changing how we think about hair loss. I'll introduce them to you, help you make sense of them, and give you my thoughts on how a given study just might change how we diagnose or treat hair loss. This podcast is for educational purposes and shouldn't be considered a substitute for medical advice. This week, we'll look at a very nice study by Zhao and colleagues in the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venereology titled Baricitinib Therapy for Pediatric Patients with Severe Alopecia Areata. And here the author set out to review the effectiveness and side effects of baricitinib for treating pediatric alopecia areata. The whole month of June is dedicated to talking about JAK inhibitors. And certainly JAK inhibitors are increasingly used around the world for the treatment of severe alopecia areata. And baricitinib and ritlocitinib are approved for severe alopecia areata. Baricitinib being approved 18 and over and ritlocitinib being approved for 12 and over. And ritlocitinib became the first JAK inhibitor to be approved for the use of uh, use in adolescence, age 12 to 18. Of course, it's used in adults as well. But what's really unique about ritlocitinib is its approval in this 12 to 18-year-old adolescent age group. There's no doubt about it that more pediatric approvals of JAK inhibitors are coming. We see that in other fields. We see that in atopic dermatitis. We see approvals of many medications uh, for immune-mediated diseases with the age group of approval dropping, dropping, and dropping. And there's no doubt in my mind we'll see that for alopecia areata. Advanced alopecia areata certainly affects a large number of children. About half of patients with alopecia areata will experience their first episodes before the age of 20. And so alopecia areata is very much a condition that affects children. And what's so important to remember is that children and adolescents respond just as well to these drugs as adults. Possibly even better, but just as well. And they certainly have fewer side effects. And so the possibility of using these medications in younger and younger Patient certainly makes a whole lot of sense. Safety issues are, of course, important because most of the time, if you're using a JAK inhibitor for alopecia areata, it will be lifelong use. And so you can imagine if you're starting a JAK inhibitor in someone who's 10, you could have decades upon decades upon decades of use of a JAK inhibitor ahead of you. And so it should be really no surprise that a handful of studies have emerged examining the benefits of baricitinib in the treatment of alopecia areata in children and adolescents. We have this approval for ritlocitinib 12 and over. And so the question arises, what about baricitinib? What about upadacitinib? What about tofacitinib? What about abrocitinib? What about all these other JAK inhibitors that are on the way? So we have a number of studies in this area already. Musa and colleagues with a nice study in 2023 looking at the treatment of moderate to severe alopecia areata with baricitinib, study in 29 patients. A study by ASFOR in the British Journal of Dermatology in 2023 looking at the use of baricitinib in pre-adolescent children. And then a study in the JEADV 2023 again with the use of baricitinib in adolescents with severe alopecia areata. So quite an interest with baricitinib to be studied in adolescents and pre-adolescent patients. Should come as no surprise. We have this wonderful approval of ritlocitinib in teenagers and adults. And so the question that is very much waiting there to be answered is, what is the safety and effectiveness of baricitinib in these age groups? And will we see JAK inhibitors be approved for younger and younger age groups? I have almost no doubt about that. The key question is safety and effectiveness. And once we prove that, um, likely approvals will follow. So we have another one of these nice baricitinib studies in the JEADV, 
titled Baricitinib Therapy for Pediatric Patients with Severe Alopecia Areata, a study by Zhao and colleagues. It's a study from China, small study, 10 patients with severe alopecia areata who received baricitinib. But what's so unique about this study is the very young age groups. Patients ranged in age from just under two years to up to 13 years, but 75% of the patients were under six and a half years of age. There was five male patients and five female patients. The mean SALT score was 87.5, indicating pretty severe alopecia areata to start with. The median age of onset of alopecia areata was three years of age, and the median duration of the current episode was three months. Most patients in this study had been on other treatments before starting baricitinib, including topical steroids, steroid injections, oral steroids, methotrexate, and one patient was on tofacitinib. So pediatric patients received 2 milligrams a day, except for one patient who failed to improve on 2 milligrams and received 4 milligrams. The precise treatment protocol is not super clear in this JEADV article, but it appears that the authors reduced the dose to half once patients achieved a SALT score of 20 or less. But the precise protocol is not super clear, unfortunately. But the main message still is pretty clear, and that is that baricitinib is helpful to this very young age group of patients with alopecia areata. All in all, the median duration of treatment was 15 months. At 36 weeks of treatment, 80% of patients had a SALT score of 20 or less. And again, this SALT score of 20 or less is used in our field as a cutoff to indicate reasonable growth. doesn't mean complete growth, but it means a reasonable amount of regrowth. Side effects were pretty mild, and just one patient had some mild temporary neutropenia. And what was interesting in this study, like all of our JAK studies, is that when patients stop the drug, a lot of patients lose hair. And four of the nine patients in this particular study retained their hair with long-term follow-up of 22 months, but five patients relapsed, and the average time to relapse was 14 months. So this isn't a study of all patients with severe alopecia areata. There certainly was a large proportion of patients with severe alopecia areata. Some did have mild. And it wasn't a study of patients with severe long-standing alopecia areata. The um, median duration of the current episode was just three months. And uh, we have to remember that as we try to compare this data to other data. These are young children with relatively short duration alopecia areata and some patients with less severe forms. And so what that means is we expect reasonably good regrowth in these patients. And we expect the prognosis of these patients to be a lot better than we see in the BRAVE AA1 and BRAVE AA2 trials. So if you have a duration of your current episode of three months, your prognosis is pretty good. If you have a duration of your current episode of five years, like so many of the patients in the BRAVE AA trials had, you expect your prognosis to be worse. So we can't compare these directly with the BRAVE AA trials to this trial. But still, really important messages on the safety and reasonable effectiveness of baricitinib in these young ages. So this is another study for the books on the use of JAK inhibitors, specifically baricitinib here in young children with alopecia areata. And so we have a number of studies with baricitinib in these adolescent and pre-adolescent groups. And I suspect that this will be an increasing trend in our field. And studies like this and studies by Asfur and Musa are really just going to add to the body of literature that suggests that it's not unreasonable to bring JAK inhibitors into the treatment plan for our patients under the age of 12. They're not FDA approved now, but um, I think we'll see those sorts of trends either with these drugs or other drugs in the future. And so a really nice reminder that JAK inhibitors tend to be well tolerated in treatment uh, in children, but 
lifelong treatment is going to be the norm for most patients with severe alopecia areata. And I think that's really important to remember. The long-term side effects of continuous JAK inhibitors is completely unknown at present. We've got some beautiful studies of baricitinib, you know, approaching three years now. We've got some great data with ritlocitinib, two years. Um, we've got poorly controlled retrospective type and case series type data with tofacitinib and alopecia areata, but not certainly the elegant randomized controlled trials or extension trials that we do with baricitinib and ritlocitinib. But still, we've only got limited follow-up. And so we're going to rely a lot on powerful real-world studies that, that await us to understand the long-term safety of baricitinib and ritlocitinib, as well as the studies that the drug companies do, understanding the long-term data. And so far, it seems pretty good. But of course, there's a number of issues that are very closely followed in our field. Are, is there truly an increased risk of blood clots? Doesn't seem to be a huge signal. Is there an increased risk of cancer? Is there an increased risk of heart disease? Um, are there other alterations that we need to be aware of? Are there any infection type risks that we need to be aware of? Um, so far, the data seems pretty encouraging in alopecia areata patients and dramatically different compared to patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So stay tuned. I think this next three, four, five, six years is going to be an incredibly exciting time as we come to understand the longer term effects of JAK inhibitors. Do they maintain their good results? And we're going to come to understand how these drugs are used in younger and younger and younger patients. This study here by Zhao and colleagues even used this JAK inhibitor in a uh, one year, eight, uh, 20 month child. So it's a child just under the age of two. So we're reducing the age of JAK inhibitors in alopecia areata dramatically. And of course, as we do this, we have to Remember that they're currently off-label, and secondly, um, we, we uh, don't have a lot of data to back up their use yet, but it's emerging. Next week, we're back for the final episode of the month of June as we continue our series on JAK inhibitors, and we'll talk about a wonderful study looking at the use of topical tofacitinib for treating lichen planal pilaris and frontal fibrosing alopecia. A really nice study, the largest of its kind, looking at the use of JAK inhibitors topically for treating FFA and LPP. A nice study by Dr. Senna and her colleagues. So I look forward to seeing you back next week. Thank you so much for joining me today and joining me all these weeks as we journey together in this wonderful field of hair loss medicine. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much. <music>